Hello, welcome to a Paper Flourish craft video. My name is Julie. In the video today, I'm going to demonstrate a couple of techniques using the Stamperia Vintage Antiquing Paste. This is a fantastic product to add sort of a vintage um, look to your page. So first idea I'm going to show you, and I've already prepared a page in my Dilution Square Journal, this one here. And I've prepared it, just done a coat of the primer, Stamperia primer, and I've dried that with the heat tool. So that prepares the page for all the product that's now going to go on top. I'm going to attach this gorgeous piece of rice paper to the page. And I'm going to do that. Uh, sorry, this, this rice paper came from the Stamperia Vintage Library Collection. This is the A4 size. And you get six lovely rice papers in there. And um, this is the one I've chosen to use. I'm going to attach to the this paper to the page using Stamperia Rice Paper Glue, which is a brilliant product. What it ends up doing, it attaches it, but it leaves the rice paper feeling like rice paper. So I'm going to go ahead and add a layer of rice paper glue to the page and then I will place that piece of rice paper down on top of the paper. So a layer of rice paper glue, let's attach this into place. I'm not even going to choose what area is going onto the page. I'm just going to place it down and what happens, happens. There we go. Now I'm going to completely dry this off with, with my heat tool. Trim the page as well before I add that layer on top to seal it. So this is now dried. To trim the rice paper, what I've done is I've just tucked it underneath. If you run a sanding block, this is the Couture Creations one, if you run that along the edge of the journal page, that rice paper will come away. So it's a really easy way um, to separate here we can see here the rice paper separating from the page and it gives you a really nice edge so i'll go ahead and do that all the way around just wanted to show you something my couture creation sanding block is very well loved so i was having a bit of trouble sanding only because i need to get a new one and then i went oh i've got the tim holtz distress sanding discs of course they fit on the end of the tim holtz blending tool and this is working a treat Look. How easy is that to separate that rice paper from the page? So if you've got these sanding discs, don't forget to get those out and use them as well. Look how easy that came away and it gives you that nice clean edge along the page. Okay, this is ready now for a coat of the rice paper glue to seal that paper down in place and then I'll give that a good dry with my heat tool. This is clear crackle paste by Stamperia. Crackle's like an absolute dream. Uh, the thinner the layer, the finer the cracks. So I'm just, I'm just going to add just some of this lovely paste. Just using the back of my metal palette knife or spatula. And I'm just going to add a thin layer of this gorgeous paste, mainly around the sort of corners and sides of this paper. You can see I've sort of added the paste just around the sides of the page. I haven't added a really thick layer because I do want it just to be those lovely fine cracks. Now I'm going to dry that completely with the heat tool and then we're going to see the magic this vintage antiquing paste can create on the page. At the moment, it doesn't really look like there's too much happening there on the page, does it? Now I've dried the clear crackle paste so it's gone clear. So now we're going to find that crackle paste. Vintage antiquing paste. And I've found the best way to apply this um, incredible paste. I'll just show you what it looks like. It smells like a tube of toothpaste, though I don't recommend you cleaning your teeth with this. There we go. You won't need very much at all. I find it best just to pop it onto a, like a, this is a Montmartre paper palette. And this is the Lavinia Stencil Brush Series 7. Now, this brush is ideal for applying this paste. So what I'm going to do is bring some onto the here. I don't need too much. Just onto the stencil brush. Back to the side. And I'm just going to start working this into the areas where I pop the um, crackle paste. The brush... Once you finish using it, I should give this a wipe, in, uh, wash out in white spirits, 
and then this only gets used for the vintage antiquing paste. So as you wrap it up in a baby wipe, pop it away, and it's ready then for when you next need to use it. To, I suppose we don't really want to keep the page looking like that. I've got a paper towel and a baby wipe. Now I'm going to take a fair bit of the moisture out of the baby wipe, just squashing it in that paper towel. And then I'm just, with the baby wipe, I'm just going to start wiping this back. And we start to see that lovely aged look. Now you can take as much of this back as you want to. I want you to see what's happening. I could have put the, paste, the vintage antiquing paste over the whole page. Could have gone the whole way over. Would look pretty amazing. Might end up doing that, but I just wanted to sort of show you the difference as well with the middle of the page, of course, is where the paste isn't. And, um, and you'll see the difference that paste makes onto the rice paper. So I'm wiping as much back as I want. Now, in some of the places with the crackle paste, I did have it a little bit thicker than others, and that's made quite a difference to the cracks. I might still wipe it back a little bit more in a moment, but I'm just going to hold this up so you can see what's happened. Can you see here? See how the paste has gone into the cracks and now it shows up. Now here, I'm not sure if you can see it, but where it was where it was a lot thinner, the cracks are so fine. Really tiny little cracks and then larger um, in the areas where the paste was slightly thicker. So it's given us that really aged look and you can see the difference in colour between here and the middle of the page. Now I'm just going to keep going ahead and wiping a little bit more of that away. With the baby wipe, it's got a little bit of the paste on it. I've just then moved the colour into the middle a little bit just to bring that aged look in without going super dark. So I've still got the centre a little bit lighter, but I'm going to leave it there and give that a good dry. I'll probably end up making a bit of a composition from the Vintage Library collection and putting it in the middle of the page, but I just love that don't you love that look? It looks like an old book page now, doesn't it? Um, I would ink the edges probably with a brown ink, whether it be vintage photo or even the lovely coffee um, dye ink pad from Stamperia, and then a bit of a composition in the middle. So if I get a chance, I will finish that page and maybe pop a photo of it up um, onto the video as well. But for the moment, I want to just pop that to the side and I'm going to move on to something show you another way that that vintage antiquing paste can be used now i've got two these are from the magic forest collection i've made a couple of resin ornaments and i have again sealed them gone over them with the stamperia primer so they're ready now um, to be to be decorated now i'm going to use a vintage patina this is another stamperia product and i'm going to paint these with the vintage patina love these because you end up with that um, sort of again that aged vintage look so I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of this out onto the paper palette just like I did before just with my paintbrush I'm just going to paint these lovely ornaments with that turquoise vintage patina you could use an acrylic paint same sort of thing so I'll go ahead and do that to both of them isn't that color beautiful they're both dry now. Doesn't that give a lovely finish onto the onto the moulds? I said I've just used it with a paintbrush, painted it on. Okay, here we go. Vintage antiquing paste, just like I did before with my Lavinia stencil brush. I'm picking some up over here on the side. Now I'm just going to do one of these to start, and then you can. I want you to be able to see the difference this makes. I am putting this paste all over the the mould. Turning my turquoise mould brown. Again, baby wipe, which I've um, taken some of the moisture away with a paper towel. And I'm just going to wipe back the mould. Again, you can wipe this back as much as you want to. You stop when you're happy with the finish. Have a look at the difference. So before the vintage antiquing paste and after. Doesn't that look amazing? Just go gently once you wipe it back. I probably went a bit rough there and took away some of the turquoise. Just go gentle with your baby wipe and it comes away. I don't mind that. That looks a bit aged, doesn't it? I'll go ahead and do the other one the same. And here are the finished moulds. 
agree they look pretty spectacular don't they to go on a project if i wanted to add a little bit more of a feature to these what have i got here some vintage gold wax prima product Put it on the back of my hand but we can even bring these features out a little bit more so easy to get an amazing effect on a product have a look it's pretty cool doesn't it all right thank you so much for watching so i hope you've enjoyed just guessing some ideas you can do with this incredible product uh the vintage antiquing paste we have this for sale along with those lavinia stencil brushes as well um, not only in store but on our online store paperflourish.com.au thank you so much for watching i will work on the journal page and i'll try and pop a photo of that on the end of the video thank you bye this is my finished journal page. I didn't do a lot extra to the page. What I ended up doing is this is a rub on transfer from one of the vintage library rub on transfer packs. These are the ephemera uh, the from the paper adhesive cutouts. So I've just inked those in the Stamperia coffee dye ink. And I've also used that around the edges of the pages just to darken those a little bit. But I'm going to, I'm not going to add any more to this because I want the star of this page to be that gorgeous vintage antiquing paste. And I'm going to hold this up again, just nice and close. So I'm hoping you can see not only these gorgeous cracks here, the larger crackles, but the really fine ones. You can see every little crackle. Now, if I hadn't used that antiquing paste on this, you would not be able to see them. But that has absolutely made this page this gorgeous stunning product and said so not only to the journal page but look at the magic it created on those molds thank you so much for watching enjoy your day and i'll be back again soon with more videos thank you bye